WBBM FM, Chicago. Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment John Lund as Johnny Dollar. Philip Martin, Johnny. Hold on, Mr. Martin. Got a job for you. Fine. Man named Carl Nelson is insured with our company. He was killed. How? Shot to death. Got a police record. Small time hoodlum. Beneficiary is a woman named Gilkerson. Maud Gilkerson. Uh huh. He disappeared. Police think it probably has something to do with Nelson's death. Want to see what you can find out? Sure. All right. Get down to New York as soon as you can. Contact Lieutenant Korchak at 11th Precinct Homicide. He'll give you all the help he can. I'll get right on it. <laughs> The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund in another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator, yours truly, Johnny Dollar. For refreshing taste, plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. When your mouth and throat feel hot and dry, a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint gives you quick, long-lasting refreshment. The lively, full-bodied Spearmint flavor cools your mouth and freshens your taste. The chewing itself helps keep your throat pleasantly moist. Best of all, you can chew and enjoy refreshing Wrigley's Spearmint gum almost any time and any place. Keep a package handy right in your purse or pocket so you can chew a stick whenever you want it. For refreshing taste... Plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Millions enjoy it, and you will too. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Columbia All Risk Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the Nelson matter. Expense account item one, $15.36, train fare and incidentals between Hartford and New York City. I arrived at 2.30 in the afternoon and after registering at the hotel, went directly to the 11th Precinct Police Station where I introduced myself to Lieutenant Korchak of Homicide. Uh, how much does your company insure the frog for? The frog? Uh, Nelson. He was called the frog. He, he looked like one. Oh? <laughs> he was insured for 10000 And Maud Gilkerson gets the money. You think she had something to do with the killing? Well, I think she knows something about it. Any theories about why he was killed? Nothing definite. The frog was a hood, long record, did time twice, and in every racket from the numbers to stick-ups. You, know, you don't generally get anything definite on a killing like this. Some of the boys wanted him dead. Who or why is hard to tell. He's been associated with Ellis Hartje for the past year or so. That's pretty big company. Yeah, Hartje's about as big as it come. Probably got unhappy with a frog and had him eliminated. Have you questioned Hartje? Sure, but just as a matter of routine. If Hartje had something to do with it, it's going to be tough to prove. Well, I guess the first thing to do is find the beneficiary, Maud Gilkerson. Well, that's not going to be easy. We've done a lot of looking. Well, I got a friend in town that just might be of some help. Do I know him? Probably, but... I'd rather not mention who it is. He doesn't get along very well with cops. <laughs> not many people do. My friend's got a king-size allergy. But for the right people and the right price, he can be very informative. Well, good luck, Dollar. Thanks. I'll let you know if I come up with anything. Expense account item two, $2.35, cab fare from the precinct to Skid Row and Hetz Hilarity, a saloon that always looked as though it wanted to collapse when the sun hit it too hard. Inside, I found Wilbur Truitt sitting at the almost deserted bar, sipping muscatel through a glass straw. Ah. Hello, Wilbur. Bucko! You are indeed a sight for sore eyes. And, Bucko, my eyes are sore. Pull up a Heppelwhite and rest yourself. Can I buy you a drink? Oh, noble prince, a king among kings. You've come in the nick. 
Can you buy me a drink? If it were not so early in the day and my spine not yet limber, I would bend and kiss your feet. I'll just take a rain check. Innkeeper, a flagon of your best amber tonic. Oh, Bucko, I've missed you. Do you realize what with economic conditions such as they are, that your absence has been the bane of my existence? Goodwill is a thing of the past. Wilbur. I once looked upon mankind with a warm smile and a kind heart. But I find it difficult to keep from becoming a complete cynic. People are pinching pennies completely out of shape. Soon the exchequer will be filled with a gigantic mass of unrecognizable copper. Why, a year ago I was averaging as much as 50 cents a day. A whole bottle. Maybe it's your pitch. My pitch? Sir, my pitch is a thing of beauty. An excursus of cogent puissance. A compassionate discourse on human suffering. Okay, My okay. pitch would tear the heart out of Mephistopheles himself. Wilbur. Uh, yes, Bucko. Where can I find Maud Gilkerson? You know why my eyes are sore, Bucko? No. Why are your eyes sore, Wilbur? I had to brave the morning sun. Things had become so desperate, I pawned my dark glasses. Oh, I'm sorry. If things don't improve, I may have to part with my glass straw. The only sure method of deriving substance when in the throes of the shakes. Maud Gilkerson is worth a bottle. Granted. In fact, I'd venture to guess that the lady is worth uh, two bottles. Mm -hmm, you're probably right. I'll pack the quarter. I'm staying at the Yorkshire. She may not want to see you. Tell her I've got 10000 for her. I beg your pardon. Tell her the frog left a $10,000 insurance policy and she's the beneficiary. Good Lord. Perhaps I was wrong. There are still a few good deeds left in the world. Sure. I just gave you two quarts worth. <laughs> Expense account item three. Two dollars and sixty cents for a cab back to the hotel where I went up to my room and smoked a half a dozen cigarettes while I waited for Wilbur Truett to call. Around 4.30 in the afternoon, the phone finally rang. Johnny Dollar. Bucko? Yeah, Wilbur? I finally contacted the party. She's not happy. Did you tell her about the insurance? The first words out of my mouth. But it seems Mr. Nelson's insurance is not enough to bring color to her cheeks and a smile to her ashen lips. What does she want? Some insurance of her own. What do you mean? She's hiding because her life's in danger. She has no money to leave town. She'll make a deal with you. Go on. Enough money to leave the country. You said town. A logical progression. The town first, then the country. Believe me, Bucko, her plight is worth considering. What will she give me in exchange for the money? That is her own personal secret. But she told me to tell you it's worth every cent. All right. Go to 107 River Street, the last room at the back of the hall. Tell her Wilbur sent you. Right. Thanks, Wilbur. <laughs> I put on my hat and coat, crossed the room, and opened the door to go out into the hall. But I didn't make it. There, standing on the other side of the door, about to knock, were two ugly-looking men dressed in loud jackets. Your name Dollar? Yeah. Mind if we come in? What would happen if I did? We'd come in. That's what I thought. Then why'd you ask? I make little bets with myself. I want to talk with you for a few minutes, Dollar. Okay. What are you doing in New York? It's a nice town. Want some advice? Not especially. Make a little bet with yourself. You're going to get it anyway. I'm a lap in front of you. Then here it is. When Bert asks you a civil question, give him a civil answer. Okay. Ask me a civil question, Bert. What are you doing in New York? It's a nice town. <coughs> oh! Why, you... Hold it. You'll just belt you again. With a broken arm? You're pretty tough, huh? All in how you look at it. If breaking his arm is being tough, then that's the best name for it. Okay. We don't want any trouble. <laughs> that's a funny line. I won't ask you no more questions. That'll save some time. I'm just going to tell you. 
Lay off the Nelson killing. Understand? Yeah. You said lay off the Nelson killing. Good boy. Because if you keep nosing around, somebody will just have to come down and investigate the dollar killing. Understand? Yeah. You said somebody will just have to come down and investigate the dollar killing. Fine, fine. Now that you understand, we'll be going. Nice meeting you both, informally, like this. Expense account item four. $3.25 for another cab that took me down to 107 River Street. The address was an old two-story frame house that faced the water. I went in and walked down the dark hall to the back room. Wilbur sent me. What's your name? Dollar. Come in. Are you Maud Gilkerson? Yeah. Wilbur said you'd make a deal. That's right. But I want to know what I'm getting in return. Look, Sonny, take my word for it. You're getting more than you're paying for. Now, how much did you bring? I got a couple of hundred. A couple of hundred? That's all I had on me. If you want more, I'll have to get it. Sonny, I gotta get out of the country. This is enough to get you out of town. If what you've got is worth it, I'll send you the rest. Not on your life. When I leave this room, nobody's ever gonna hear from old Mort again. You've got 10000 coming from Nelson's insurance policy. Uh, how long will it take to get it? Well, that depends. First, I've got to report on Nelson's death. I and... gotta get out of here as soon as I can. Another day or so, they'll find me. Well, it'll take at least three weeks before... Three weeks? Sonny, if I stay here, I'll be buried in three weeks. What are you scared of? Dying. I don't like the idea. I don't blame you. How soon can you get me some more money? How much more? Five hundred. What am I buying? I'm not telling you anything until I get the money. Okay, then we'll just forget it. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I'm not trying to be tough, but what I got is too hot to go around shooting my face off about. How do I know if I tell you that you won't take it to the cops? You don't? Well... Wilbur said I could trust you. That's right. Okay, okay. I'll tell you. But give me the 200 on account. The there you are. Okay, thanks. Uh, you want a drink? No, thanks. Mind if I have one? Go ahead. I don't usually take this stuff, but uh, I, I need it. <coughs> oh, frog left me. Ten thousand, huh? That's right. Nice guy. Nasty disposition, but he was okay. You didn't know him, huh? No. Well, he's been with the outfit about a year now. The outfit? Boss Hartje. Ellis Hartje. Yeah. The frog done pretty well for himself. Until lately. Yeah, he, he always worried that hit him in the head. He was always planning they shouldn't. You know how it is with small guys like the frog. You never know when something goes wrong and the outfit sends word to hit you in the head. Frog always worried about getting hit in the head. Ah, but he was smart. While he was alive. Yeah, yeah. He, he figured as long as he was smart like he was, he'd fix it so Hachi would never be able to hit him. Frog was in on most of the stuff Hachi's been setting up in this town. Not big in it, you know, but in it. And he kept his eyes open. Found out too much and they killed him for it? Yeah, but it wasn't only what he found out. It was what he collected. Collected? Enough evidence to send Hachi and his boys away for a hundred years. Maybe the chair even. Did Hachi know it? Sure. Frog told him when he found out he was hot. He told Hachi if he got killed, the stuff would go to the D.A. And you've got it. I got it. Why didn't you give it to the D.A.? Well, even if they send Hachi up, he's got friends. I'd be dead before he went to trial. You want another 500 for... And that's dirt cheap. Especially when the dirt's liable to be in my face. How long do I have to get it? Oh, just as soon as you can. Like I said, I ain't got much longer. You found me and you ain't got connections like Hachi. Oh, they'll find me. I'll have the 500 in an hour. Okay, okay. I'll make arrangements. Uh, wait a second. Here. What is it? Well, what does it look like? It's a key. You've been okay with me, so I'll trust you. It's a key to a locker in Grand Central, number 415. That's where the package is. Friends, no matter what kind of work you do, 
It's a real help to chew delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum right while you're working. When you're warm or tired, for instance, the lively, full-bodied spearmint flavor is really refreshing. It helps keep your mouth and throat feeling cool and moist. Chewing on that smooth, good-tasting piece of Wrigley Spearmint makes the time pass more pleasantly, too. It seems to make your work go smoother and easier. Keep a package or two of Wrigley Spearmint chewing gum handy all the time. Enjoy chewing Wrigley Spearmint while you're working and at other times. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. And now, with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. After Maud Gilkerson gave me the key to the locker in Grand Central, I left the old house on River Street and started back for town. It was getting dark and there were no cabs in that section, so I headed west for the busy traffic. I'd only gone about a hundred yards when a car pulled away from the curb about a half block behind me. A big black car with the lights off. I thought about the key in my pocket and the evidence in the locker that would send the biggest hoodlum in the country away for life. I had to get rid of the key before they caught up with me. I turned a corner, and there, a few feet in front of me, was a blind man. A beggar sitting with his legs folded, and on his lap, a tin cup with a stack of pencils. Bless you. Thanks. I'm going to need it. Hold it, Dollar. Well, good evening. Get in the car. Get in. In the back seat. Just don't take advice, do you, Dollar? You didn't say anything about taking a walk. I told you to lay off the Nelson killing. Who says I didn't? You dug up Maud Gilkinson. Who? <laughs> oh, I told you. When Bert asks you a civil question... Give, give him, him a, a civil, civil answer. answer. Okay. So I dug up Maud Gilkinson. So what? What'd she give you? A lot of double talk. She gave me nothing. I think you're lying. But we let a couple of the boys off to talk to her. They'll find out. What happens in the meantime? We drive around while the goon searches you. Then we go see someone who wants to have a little talk with you. Okay, goon, search him. Get down on the floor. Is that your name, goon? Get down there. I should have guessed. What? Oh, nothing. Nothing. Bert drove us around, the goon made me strip down to my socks while he searched my clothes. When he didn't find what he was looking for, he swatted me across the back of the neck, told me to get dressed. Then Bert drove us across town to a big apartment house that overlooked the river. Bert parked in the basement garage, and I was led into an elevator that took us to the penthouse. Ellis Harji, the czar of the underworld, looked up from his evening paper. This is Dollar, boss. Did he find more? Yeah. Ernie and Frank are with her. Uh-huh. Well, sit down, Mr. Dollar. All right. Bert told me he and the gun paid you a little visit this afternoon, eh? If you can call that a little visit. Will they go and get rough? Don't tell me he can do something else. <laughs> You're kind of fresh, huh? I'm ripe enough to know I don't like getting pushed around. Sometimes you've got to take a pushing around to understand things. I don't take a pushing around from you or anyone else, Archie. You think you've got a choice? Not at the moment, no. If I want you to take a beating, you take one. I'll make up for it. You ain't making up for anything. Now, you've got to understand. I'm running things, see? You ain't going to say nothing about what happens or what don't happen. So you just try and relax and take what comes, huh? You cooperate. It's going to be nice. He didn't have anything on him. Nothing, huh? I went over him good. He didn't have nothing. She tell you where it is, Dollar? What? You know what I'm talking about. Whatever it is, the frog left for Maud Gilkerson. I found Maud Gilkerson to tell her Nelson left her $10,000. She didn't say nothing about me. Not huh? a thing. She didn't say anything but thanks and get out. He was in with her for about 10 minutes. 
So it took her ten minutes to say thanks and get out, huh? Look, what do you think she said to me? That's what I want you to tell me, Dollar. How can I tell you something when there's nothing to tell? I located Maud Gilkerson to tell her that Okay, Nels... okay, okay, you said that. I don't know what you're so worried about me for. Or an old dame like Maud. What can we do to a big man like you? Make me mad. Nello. Yeah. No. All right, take care of it. Yeah. Now, that was Ernie. Maud, tell him anything? Yeah. She told him that she gave Dollar a key. Is that right, Dollar? She gave you a key? She told him she gave him a key to a locker in Grand Central Station. Is that right, Dollar? She told him the locker number was 415. The stuff was in a locker. Is that right, Dollar? Do me any good to say no? No. The goons search me. He didn't have no key on him, boss. All right. All right, where is it, Dollar? I haven't got it. Take him somewhere and find out what he'd done with it. Yeah. Let's go, Dollar. You're making a mistake, Archie. Nice meeting you, Mr. Dollar. The goon and Bert took me back down in the elevator, hustled me into the car, and drove me back across town to a warehouse in the Bowery. In a small room on the second floor of the warehouse, the goon went to work while Bert stood by with a gun. Where's the key, Dollar? I don't know. <coughs> And you're the guy that was going to bust my arm. be a whole lot easier if you just tell us. I can't tell you about something I haven't got. <clears throat> oh. The goon worked on me until I passed out. Then he threw some water in my face and started working on me again. Oh, he knew his job. It hurt, but it didn't kill me. When I was coming to for the third time, the phone rang. And Bert left the room to answer it. I knew this was the only chance I was going to get. When the goon leaned over me with a bucket of water, I grabbed the cuffs of his trouser legs and pulled. I staggered up to my feet as the goon started up off his back. I kicked him as hard as I could in the face. I grabbed the heavy bucket and stumbled over to the door, just as Bert came back from the phone call. Hey, goon. Ask me a civil question, Bert. I tied them up as best I could, then took Bert's gun and the car keys. I found my way out of the warehouse, climbed in the big black sedan, and drove across town to the block that ran into River Street. All the way, I kept my fingers crossed that the blind man with the tin cup and pencils would still be there. Pardon me. Yes? I came by here a little while ago and dropped a key in your cup. Oh, yes, I found it. Uh, uh, here it is. I'd like to buy it back. Buy it? Yeah. Here. Oh, thank you. Thank you. I, I guess I'd better be going. It's beginning to rain. No, it isn't. It's just bleeding out. I wheeled the big car back across town to the 11th precinct and caught Lieutenant Korchak just going off duty. He took one look at my face, mumbled something about careless truck drivers, and sat down to listen to my story. Bird and the goon? Yeah. I left them in a warehouse. They won't stay tied up long. The boys that picked up Maud Gilkerson were named Ernie and Frank. Ernie Phillips and Frank Seller. I'll have them picked up. This key could bust this town wide open. I hope you're right, Dollar. A lot of people have tried to get hard, Now, let's go down to Grand Central. Right. Oh, uh, about Maud Gilkerson. What about her? They uh, fished her out of the river about an hour ago. Yeah, okay, give me the key. Here. Argy knows about this locker. 
Ernie and Frank forced Maud to tell them before they killed her. You sure? They called Harji while I was in his apartment. He told me. Ah, let's see what we've got. Huh. A package. Korchak, look out! Huh? I'd seen them just as they came around the corner. The goon was grinning through the teeth I'd kicked out, and Bert had a big lump on the side of his head where I'd nailed him with a bucket. Everyone came out with their guns all at once. Korchak jumped to one side, and I dropped to my stomach while I squeezed out all six shots from the gun I'd taken away from Bert. When the smoke cleared, Korchak was down, but he was smiling. He'd caught one high on the shoulder, but Bert and the goon were through being bad boys. The goon was dead, and Bert didn't have far to go to catch up. The wagon cleaned it up, and Korchak and I got ourselves patched up at emergency. They wanted to keep us in for observation, but Korchak had waited too long to get Harji, and nothing was going to stop him from making the arrest. I didn't want to miss it either. Korchak collected a squad, and we paid a visit to the penthouse. Think he skipped? Stakeout said he hasn't left the building. Come on, Harji, open up. This is Korchak, and I got a present for you. Hey, get back. Come on in, Korchak. I got a little something for you, too. You know, I'm kind of glad he wanted it this way. I'll shoot the lock, and then we go in. All right, hit the door. You all right, Dollar? Yeah, sure. Is he dead? He sure is. Expense account items five and six. The $200 I gave to Maud, which they never recovered, and $1.50 for the two bottles I gave to Wilbur, who recovered three days later. The contribution to the blind man is on me. Expense account items seven and eight, $75.95, hotel bill, train fare, and incidentals back to Hartford. Expense account total, $301.01, and multiple bruises. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Remember, friends, for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment, treat yourself to delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. The taste of fresh spearmint is cooling and delightful, and there's lots of it in every stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. It freshens your mouth, helps keep your throat moist, and sweetens your breath besides. You'll enjoy the good chewing, too, because Wrigley's Spearmint is so smooth and pleasant to chew on. There's nothing else quite like it. Next time you're at the store, stop at your friendly merchant's display of chewing gum and get a few packages of good-tasting Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. Always keep some handy for refreshing taste plus chewing enjoyment. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Blake Edwards with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Victor Rodman, Joseph Kearns, Herb Butterfield, Jim Nusser, James McCallion, Martha Wentworth, and Bill Conrad. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network.